You know, gaming used to actually be simple. There was a, a time, believe it or not, when two to three guys could hack away at some code and churn out the next big thing. And while some might think those days are long gone, it turns out they're just plain wrong. Our next guest is the editor of GameTunnel.com, a website devoted to the independent video game scene. And he joins us now to talk all about it. Please welcome Russell Carroll to the show. Russell, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. The indie gaming scene. What does it take to be an independent game? Do you just is a parent's basement the minimum requirement, or is there something else? <laughs> Almost. Not quite. Not quite. Most of these indie games come from a philosophy where they, they are doing their own thing. And so that idea of them being in their parents' basement, that's somewhat true because they're doing their own thing and they may be doing it without any money right. in their parents' basement. But really what, what happens here is, in addition to not having the money, they become very innovative because when you don't have the money to make things happen, you have to find other ways to do it. Sure. And so the whole indie gaming scene has a lot to do with innovation, and it has a lot to do with just freedom, I think. And is that why we don't see any real big like football titles or first-person shooters exactly. or these other established genres because they just can't afford the million-dollar CGs and texture work and whatnot? Or, or the, the license with the NFL, right. those types of things, yeah. What you will see, though, are things like soccer games where you are maybe simulating being a goalkeeper, mm -hmm. something that's very simple. And they do it very, very well. Okay. Now, what is GameTunnel.com? How does this service the indie gaming community? GameTunnel.com covers indie games because uh, basically nobody else was covering them. So, right. yeah. Unfortunately. Nice yeah, yeah unfortunately. Um, so what we do is we, we look at all the different games that come in. And, and most of these come to us, get sent to us. We take a look at them, figure out which ones uh, we like, and then we just push them on the public as much as we can so that people get to see what's out there. So what makes a good indie game? What, is, what does a game have to have in it for, for it to get a sparkle in your eye and say this deserves to be on the site? In my eye. In your eye, in, particularly. In I mean, it's eye. pretty much your site. You're it's the guy, pretty much right? my, Yeah, and that, that's mostly true. Um, for me, it needs to be something different. There are how many FPS games out there? Right. Another one and another one and another one every week, it seems like. Sure. It's got to be something different. I, I want to play a game that's not like the other games. And also, it needs to be something I can pick up and probably put down fairly quickly because I'm getting a little bit older, and, and the demographics for the indie crowd the people who play those games is, is probably a little bit older. Right. It also includes both, both genders. Um, it's got to be a game that I can play in 10 minutes, put it down, and then get on to hanging out with my kids. Sure, sure. Now, your, your site had got a lot of traffic. At least I, I really saw people talking about the 2004 Best of the Year awards that sure. you guys did. Tell me about that. What were some of the categories? What were some of the games that were nominated? Okay, well, with categories, we did uh, a breakdown like most gaming sites would. We had your action, your adventure, your sports. We also did some technical categories, graphics and sound, and then we did some special categories, including things like the console indie game of the year, because uh, indie games are making to consoles. Yeah, see, now that's interesting. How can a game be indie? Don't you need some sort of a budget to make it to a console? You do, and that's an interesting question. Who, who financed that? In a lot of cases, right. we, have, we have developers who are developers who made mainstream games, and now they've left the mainstream genre. They're doing their own thing. Um, in the case of Alien Hominid, which is a game that was a, a console game, is a console right. game. It started a, out as a Flash game, actually. Exactly, yeah. and, it's, and they basically they wanted to do their own thing. They couldn't get any company to pick it up. EA didn't want it. Nobody wanted it. They did it their own, on their own way, on their own dollar. They got done with it, and then it got picked up and put out. So that's one way it happens. Very cool. Now, um, let's, let's talk about the, the overall. You said there was, there was an overall top yes, category, there right? Yes, there was a top ten. All right, well, let's, let's, let's take a listen. Let's look at the top five. How about that? Done deal. All right, so number five was a game called Break Quest. Break Quest. Now, this sounds like a breakout game to me. Yeah. This sounds like a simple block game, and for yeah. that, I wonder why on earth is this winning any sort of awards? Why? Why? Because it's, it's really good. How's okay, that? fair that? enough. Well, I mean, what's, what makes, like you said, there's, there's a thousand and one Tetris games, and you don't want another first person shooter. Mm -hmm. Why is this game not just another breakout game? I, I'm looking at it now, it doesn't look like a typical breakout game. So. The, the level design is really unlike anything else out there. Break Quest uses a lot of physics in the way that its levels works, and one of the things you'll see is like you'll have a, a line going across the screen that has different bricks attached to it. When you hit each brick, that brick responds to the ball by maybe twisting or twirling, and then the line will also move. Okay? okay, so the levels are very, very different. If you took every good idea from every breakout game ever and then multiplied it by 10, you wouldn't have a game as good as this game. Honestly, I'm a big fan of breakout games. They shouldn't make All another right. one. Sounds ever. like I will never question this. that game ever again. Play my, it. My apologies. Trust me. The number like four it. game, what was that one? Number four was Outpost Colloqui. Okay. Outpost Colloqui is another uh, pseudo-professional product. The people who uh, have worked on it have also done professional games. It's a sim slash space management game, and... Uh, 
honestly, I haven't had, I haven't had a chance to, to touch this one here. The, the reason why this game is so great is because it has a lot of good humor in it. Okay. Humorous hit and miss in games, this one hits it hard, and it does really, really well. This game is fun, and there are way too many sim games out there that are not Definitely. any fun. Um, Will Wright would have been happy with this game. All right, next up, this was one that we've actually talked about briefly on the show, Hamster sure. Ball. Hamster Ball. Um, this is a great game, lots of fun. It has uh, a lot of obstacles, a lot of variety in the different levels. This is actually the game I have played most out of all my indie games this year. Yeah. It's yeah. on my desktop, I play it all the time, just because it's a blast to play. Yeah, and, and Marble Madness was great, so anything that even remotely looks or plays like it. And this is way better than Marble oh, Madness. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So. All right, and then Wick and the Fable of Souls. Now, I, I showed this one off on the show, and Kevin Rose looked at me and said, Dumb. Dumb, Dumb yeah. What? what I mean, when you look at this game at first glance, not all that impressive. Why does this stand out? And, and the graphics, I think, are very interesting. You can kind of feel the gloomy, moody feel of it. The, the sound adds to that. There's also a bunch of poetry in the game. I don't know if you caught that, which is just weird. Yeah, it's I, kind if of it's different. text, I skip it. So I'm sorry. I uh, completely that's okay. didn't notice that. You'll get over it. Um, with, with Wick, the way he moves, obviously, is with that tongue. And what makes this game great is the connection you can make with the character. You're able to move around, and it's just fluid motion in the way that you move. When you get used to it, and it takes a minute to get used to controlling the sure. character, when you get past that point, it, you make a connection where Wick's almost an extension of you. And I promise you can go to bed and then want to play this game the next morning, be craving it like a drug. It is a great game. But games aren't addictive. <laughs> I want to throw that out there. Video games aren't addictive, even though you might crave them like many. Drugs. Yes. Uh, number um, one game. Sure. Speaking of extension of yourself and character control, Gish. Which Gish. I tried to talk about on the show, <laughs> but how do you describe this game? Please sell it because I did a horrible job of doing it. Gish is, is one of the single best experiences you may play in a video game ever. Period. And, and the way that this works is, is, is really based on the physics engine. Gish has a few things that he can do. He can become sticky. He can become slick and go through small spaces. Mm -hmm. He can become, um, he can increase his weight. Right. And the way the physics works with that, you may be going over like a rickety bridge, and the bridge is held by two ropes. But you could walk across the bridge carefully, or maybe just jump and become really solid on the one side, break the one rope so it's still attached on the other side, become sticky with Gish, and then attach to the bridge as it swings across yeah. the room. And use that momentum, let go, become unsticky again, fly through the air, grab onto the top of the wall, and then work your way back down through other parts of the game. It's the simple, but the physics really amazing. change everything. And, and it's way better than the demo makes it look. Yes, so. absolutely. All right. Well, we appreciate the top five. Do you mind sticking around and maybe taking some calls? Absolutely. From the, the folks absolutely. at home? Absolutely. Perfect. Thanks, Russell. Read more about the independent game underground and the best games of 2004. You have to check it out. You can find it on our website, thescreensavers.com. And, of course, gametunnel.com is your source for all things indie. don't get G4 Tech TV, contact your local cable provider.